Hey crafty friends, it's Joy here for Honeybee Stamps. For today's project, I created two cards with my idea of what an antique wallpaper would look like. So I'm gonna start by using the bold botanical stamps that I'm not using the coordinating dies. And I have some Bristol Smooth watercolor cardstock that I'm gonna be using. And I wanna lay down these images so I can have the flowers and the greenery and so I'm just kind of laying down a few just to kind of get an idea of where uh, my flowers and stuff need to be. Now I love decorating my home and I've been just watching tons of people adding these beautiful wallpapers back like that's back in which is really awesome and I really love some of these antique looking wallpaper so that was kind of my idea for these two cards to just kind of give the look of like if you bought a really old home and you walked in it had this beautiful wallpaper but it was just kind of old and worn that is my inspiration for these cards so i am also going to be doing a fun technique that i accidentally stumbled upon I was, I can't even remember what I was making, but I was stamping something. I stamped an image just to test the ink color and somehow I sprayed it with water. I couldn't even remember, but I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, I, this kind of gives it this um, water colored look by spritzing on water. So we're going to be doing that. And so I will tell you something I probably would have done different the next time, but this was a really fun technique. So I am using Distress Oxides because they are uh, water, you know, they, they're water reactive. So I'm using Saltwater Taffy, which is a new color, Dried Marigold, uh, Milled Lavender. Those are going to be the flower colors. Then I'm using Shabby Shutters for the greenery. And then I'm going to bring in Speckled Egg and Antique Linen to kind of give it a different, the two cards, different color backgrounds. So obviously I'm using my Misty. I'm gonna stamp these images. I'm just laying them out where I need them to be. So it takes a minute. And I did one of these on camera, the second one I did off camera. I did not stamp it exactly the same, but you could have your two pieces of cardstock ready and stamp your images and then add in your, do the first cardstock background, sorry guys, and stamp your images, take that one out, add your second piece of cardstock into your Misty and stamp those images again. So you could mass produce this actually quite easy. I just did, I didn't want these backgrounds to be exactly the same, so I did the layout different and the colors different. But like I said, if you wanted to mass produce, that would be super easy to do, especially because the Misty helps with that so very much. So I'm just, as you can see, I'm moving this around in my Misty. That way I can have some of these images hanging off and it works out perfect because you want it uh, all the way to the edges. I do end up trimming this down a quarter of an inch on all sides because I want to fit this onto the scalloped A2 frames that we'll be using a little bit later. So now there's these little pieces that are actually the centers of the flowers, but I didn't add the centers of the flowers. I actually left that out because I really wanted these floral images to be simple but i am adding these centers just around with the shabby shutters just to kind of fill in some of those open spaces and i really love how it turned out it's so so cute and you guys this was super simple to do so any kind of ink that's water reactive will i think will work for this so now when i'm done stamping i'm going to bring in my distress sprayer and i'm going to spray the backgrounds now here's where i think i would have got a better result. When I stamped this, I stopped for about a half an hour and was doing something else. And then I came back and spritzed the backgrounds. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm spraying it. I'm kind of drying it. I don't want it to run too much, but I am really getting my cardstock wet. Again, this is Bristol Smooth Watercolor Cardstock. So I would say any smooth watercolor cardstock. Well, I probably I would say any watercolor cardstock actually. And as you can see, especially around the greenery, the color is starting to flood out and these images are starting to soften. They're not gonna be quite as crisp, which I love. But I think that would have happened a little bit more had I done this as soon as I was done inking and I didn't wait. Um, if, I, if I had just done it immediately, I think I would have got a, an even better result. But I am not unhappy with it. I think it turned out great. 
but as you can see the colors are just kind of flooding and bleeding out from the images and I'm just taking a, a dry paper towel and just getting some of the water that's really puddling up but look at those two backgrounds you can totally see the difference now this background I have not added the water to yet I decided to ink this background up with oh what did I use oh speckled egg distress oxide ink and then I'm going to spritz it with my distress sprayer because I didn't know if inking up the background would change how the ink ran it did not so you could do it either way you could ink up your background and then spritz it or do it the first way where I did spritz it and then I'm gonna ink that separate background up in a minute in a minute so I'm just going to have the edges quite a bit darker this is the one that we already did the spritzing on and while I had my uh, stencil mat out I thought I would come in with antique linen and just blend that around the edges and isn't that just so lovely looking I love how that water just reacted and just really softened those images okay so here's the one that we, I added the speckled egg to and now I am spritzing that it's doing exactly the same thing so again there's no difference in which order you're going to ink up your or ink blend your background but you can see all of that green color and the orange some of that pink is just kind of bleeding out from the images and just softening those so they don't look so bright and harsh in a good way <laughs> now that that's done and dry I'm going to come back in and add more of that speckled egg around the edges just to make that a little bit darker then I'm going to bring in the quattro foil stencil and you guys to me this is what made it so I'm coming in with the antique linen on the background of the antique linen and just going quite a bit darker around the edges. I will go lighter on the center because I don't want to get rid of that light area. I like the edges darker and the center lighter, so I wanna keep that. But look at that stencil. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. But I decided a little bit more, a little darker, a little bit in the center, and then we've got it, perfect. Now for that uh, speckled egg background, coming back in with that and just going back over it. And this, I love both of these cards, but of course this one's my favorite because I tend to lean towards, towards blues and greens. But it's just absolutely stunning. That bottom left needed a little bit more because you couldn't really see it, but you could go as heavy or as light as you wanted with the stencil. Okay, so now I am using the Bitty Buzzwords dies. I die cut the word friend and hello three times from white cardstock because I want, I think the white's gonna pop really nicely off of this. And I'm gonna glue three of those together. I like doing it this way because it gives it nice dimension all the way through. And when you have um, word dies like this, I think it's too hard to put like foam tape behind it because some of those areas are so thin. So I find die cutting multiples and gluing them together totally works out. Okay, so then I have two of these backgrounds. This is the scalloped A2 frames from white cardstock. I have some, I have some score tape on the back of my cards because I totally ran out of my um, tape runner. So tape runner would work just fine. But these papers are a little bit warped so you need some strong adhesive when you're going to adhere it to that scalloped frame okay in my misty i'm going to stamp the more more of the sentiments from the bitty buzzwords and this first one is going to say hello sweet friend now when i started i thought you know let me try the antique linen let me try the speckled egg to stamp up the sentiments first you just really couldn't see it so I actually came back in with some black ink and just stamped that up so I tried the antique linen didn't work you could see the speckled egg a little bit still didn't work so now I did the black ink so that one says hello sweet friend the next one is going to say just for you friend and I'm gonna stamp that again of course in black ink and I want to line it up with my sentiment just so I have an idea of where that's going to go on my card obviously remove that close the lid on my misty I'm using those grid lines to make sure my sentiment is straight thank goodness for a misty and then I'm going to stamp that down and then all we have to do is attach this to a white a2 size card base and then I'm going to adhere 
the hello and friend sentiments. I love that pop of white. That little bit of black is not a big deal because it's such a small, thin sentiment. But this pop of white, I just think really adds a lot because that scalloped frame is also white. So I did trim down those uh, inked pieces smaller than obviously than the frame so we can enjoy that scalloped frame. I'm just gonna finish adding the dots to the eye. And then these two cards are completely finished. And I just love how these turned out. And I think that stencil really did make this card. But I love that technique of that water. And I'm definitely going to try it again. But I'm going to do it immediately after I ink. Because I think we'll get an even more dramatic effect. I want to thank you guys so very much for stopping by and watching. And I hope that you feel inspired. I hope that you have an awesome day. And I will be back with another video. Thanks so much. Bye.